Veterans have been on the front lines of the U.S. peace movement for quite a long time, at least as far back as Vietnam, and certainly to some extent before then. But Vietnam really came uh, a large uh, veterans uh, peace movement. Uh, veterans returning from Vietnam were very angry when they realized that they had been lied to and manipulated into fighting an illegal and an unjust war. Um, and they also uh, were angry that the government was not taking care of their physical wounds and their psychological wounds from that war. Um, Vietnam Veterans Against the War was a very powerful organization and near the, in the final years of the Vietnam uh, anti-war movement. They were on, in the front lines of every peace march and uh, uh, they famously uh, had protested outside the White House and threw their medals over the fence into the White House. And, uh, so uh, actually Vietnam Veterans uh, Against the War, that organization still exists. Um, and uh, some of their members are also uh, dual members with Veterans for Peace. Uh, and of course, in the recent years, the uh, young uh, veterans of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have been on uh, very much the cutting edge of the peace movement in the United States. Um, and they are also joining Veterans for Peace, but they have a, their own organization, uh, Iraq Veterans Against the War, which Veterans for Peace helped to uh, to get off the ground. We realized it was important for the young veterans of those wars to have their, their own voice. And uh, we're happy that increasingly uh, they are also getting involved with and joining uh, Veterans for Peace. Uh, and of course, uh, most of our members have uh, began their speaking out publicly against the war after their military service was over. But quite a few of them uh, also had, had uh, resisted the war in one way or another while they were in the military. And actually, uh, since the beginning of the, since the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan and uh, subsequent uh, invasion and occupation of uh, Iraq, uh, well over uh, 10,000 uh, U.S. soldiers have deserted uh, from the Army and from the Marines. And, uh, uh, they're not all uh, at large, you know, many of them have returned to service or, return, or gone to jail or been captured, uh, but thousands are still uh, AWOL. Uh, at this, AWOL is a term uh, you may be familiar with, away without official leave, uh, they took off. Um, and uh, s uh, some of them are, uh, actually most of them are what we call underground in the U.S. Some of them are living surprisingly openly. Uh, with the knowledge of their family and friends, living, uh, some of them are living almost normal lives, uh, but they uh, have this uh, uh, possibility of being arrested at any time and going, and going to prison. So they need and deserve our support. Uh, several hundred have also uh, fled to Canada. Most of them are Iraq veterans. Uh, they've served one term or Iraq, one tour of Iraq. They saw the reality. Uh, they, the nightmare of that war, and when they were ordered to go back, they refused and instead uh, fled the country. They're seeking uh, sanctuary in Canada. And they've had a very difficult time. They're getting no support from the Canadian government. They've been forced to apply for political refugee status. None of them have been granted that status yet. Some of them are appealing, uh, and uh, there's still ha there's been three or four of them deported back to the U.S. who've gone to jail. Uh, for a year and more. And uh, uh, there's a young, uh, we, Helen and I uh, just met, we've been traveling around Europe, we met Andre Shepard in uh, Germany, who's a, an Iraq veteran who's applied for political asylum there. So these, these uh, resistors uh, really do need our support and I'm really happy that uh, UK Veterans for Peace, um, even before it's founding meeting today has already been actively supporting uh, soldiers who uh, here in the UK who've resisted the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, um, and including Bradley Manning. Now Bradley Manning, uh, most of you have, have most, have you all heard of Bradley Manning? Who has not heard of Bradley Manning? Okay, it was a couple, probably a couple people. Uh, more, I don't want to put you on the spot there. But at any rate, Bradley Manning has become kind of the preeminent 
soldier resistor of our time. And, uh, you know, resistance takes many, many forms. I mean, I've talked to uh, uh, guys in uh, uh, who, Iraq veterans who would go out on missions uh, in their armored vehicle, sometimes tank, and basically they'd go park under the underpass somewhere and uh, just avoid <laughs> contact with the enemy. Sometimes they'd even send notes with the, the Iraqi kids, you know, take this over to your big brother, tell him uh, we don't want any contact with you, we're not going to mess with you, hope you won't mess with us. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it, that was very common in Vietnam, too. They called it search and avoid missions. Uh, and uh, uh, these guys in Iraq actually went a step further. They, some of them are pretty tech savvy because the, back in the, at the home base, uh, they had computers that could track, you know, where the tank is going. Uh, and they figured out a way to tell it that the tank was over here when they were still over here under the underpass, you know, so I was pretty <laughs> impressed with that. So a lot of resistance that goes on, you never hear, you'll never hear about it. Or you might hear about it many years later. If you see the movie Sir No Sir, uh, the hidden history of the of GI resistance during Vietnam was military, resistance within the military, it's, it's amazing all the different forms of resistance that took place, very creative. Now, uh, uh, we met, uh, Helen and I recently met Malalai Joya from Afghanistan, and she, she, she's a young woman who's taken a very courageous stance against the U.S. occupation, and also against the, the Taliban and the warlords in Af Afghanistan. And she's, she said, you know, uh, a lot of the GIs in Afghanistan, they're helping to get the truth out uh, just by sending videos and photos of what's really happening there and getting the truth out about the war. Um, so that's another form of resistance. And of course, Bradley Manning is, is uh, I guess, the epitome of that. Because if he actually did what the U.S. Army has accused him of doing, he uh, made public hundreds of thousands of, of, of documents. Um, and what were these documents? Well, first of all, there's the, there's the collateral murder video, uh, which was released by WikiLeaks, and it's been seen by millions of people um, on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, and what it shows is that um, U.S. soldiers in an Apache helicopter in Baghdad kind of casually uh, uh, shooting down unarmed civilians below, um, and uh, uh, clearly a war crime. And also, he released the Iraq War Diaries and the Afghan War Diaries, which are daily army reports of you know what's going on on the on the ground. And what they reveal is that the killing of civilians uh, was much more widespread and much more routine than the military ever admitted to. And uh, also that they, these killings were regularly covered up. And you can see the pattern if you watch, if you follow them, these news stories. You know, Af you'll hear that a number of Afghan civilians were, were bombed and killed. And then uh, first the army will deny that they had anything to do with it, or they'll, then they'll, they'll deny that they were civilians, these were terrorists that we killed. And then, you know, eventually, if, if, if there's media people on the ground that do enough digging and get the word out, eventually they'll admit, well, I guess we made a little mistake there, you know, we'll go pay them off and try to, try to make good on it. So, uh, anyway, Bradley Manning revealed that these, these, these wars, for initiating a war that is, uh, an unnecessary war, a war of choice uh, that is against international law is, of course, the biggest crime of all, a war crime of all. These, th these wars and occupations are one huge war crime, but within them are many, many war crimes virtually on a daily basis. And that's what Bradley Manning has revealed. And that's why he's being persecuted the way he's being persecuted. He's been in, in uh, custody now for over, uh, well, not over, almost two years. He was arrested in May of, of 2010, uh, just a month after the collateral murder video was, was released. Um, and only now is he finally, you know, coming to court-martial. He's had, plus, as you know, he, he was held in 
solitary confinement for much of that time and um, in torturous conditions. Well, first of all, solitary confinement is torture and uh, uh, it's, a, it's certainly a way to destroy a person. Uh, but he was not allowed to exercise. He was not allowed to have contact with other prisoners. He was forced to stand uh, naked at attention and just generally abused. In the, and many people believe that uh, what the military was trying to do was to break him and to get him to turn on Julian Assange uh, because they're trying to gather evidence. There is, by the way, a secret grand jury in the United States which has uh, apparently released a secret indictment against Julian Assange as of, uh, we know this as of about a month ago when it was released by WikiLeaks, of all places. But uh, at any rate, Bradley Manning uh, is being made a scapegoat uh, for these illegal wars. Uh, instead of uh, dealing with the reality uh, that they're waging uh, unjust, illegal wars that are populated by war crimes, uh, they're trying to shoot the messengers. They're trying to shoot Julian Assange and Bradley Manning. Uh, Bradley Manning finally had his first pretrial hearing uh, right before Christmas time. Okay. Uh, I think it was no coincidence that it was done at a time where the public wouldn't be paying much attention to what was going on. Uh, Bradley's court-martial may be in August. The, Ar the Army's pushing for August. That'll be like two and a half years after he was arrested. His, uh, his, his attorney is pushing for April, which would be this month, and, and raising concerns about Bradley being denied the right to a speedy trial. There's so many complex issues in this trial about like who should have access to the evidence, uh, the, the, the government and the military are not allowing the defense to have access to evidence which would cl uh, clear Bradley Manning. Much of these documents never should have been classified in the first place and hundreds of thousands of people had access to it. Um, there are reports uh, that were done by the State Department and the Defense Department that show that WikiLeaks releases did little or no damage uh, to the United States and not a single person has been harmed as a result of it. And yet uh, the uh, judge and the court-martial is not allowing the defense to have access to those reports or to call witnesses who could testify to that. At any rate, uh, uh, we go on about Bradley Mann. I think it's really, really important. There's so many issues that come out here in terms of transparency, in terms of internet freedom, um, and just freedom of speech, the right of the people to know. Uh, it's not a war crime. It's not a crime to release information about war crimes. In fact, it's a crime to cover up information about war crimes as the U.S. Army is doing. So Bradley Manning really needs and deserves our support. The, the crime that he's charged with aiding the enemy actually carries the death penalty. And although the Army prosecutors say they will not pursue the death penalty, they're not asking for the death penalty, theoretically the judge could go ahead if he's convicted of aiding the enemy and sentence him to death. Uh, I think what the Army certainly wants to do is put him away for the rest of his life for a good, good number of his years as an example so nobody else ever thinks about doing the same thing. Um, and also just to, uh, I think it's a very vindictive uh, prosecution because of course they're very angry uh, that he uh, let people know the truth about these wars. So he very much needs and deserves our support. Uh, he's getting a lot of support, the Bradley Manning Support Network it's a very good website you can go to, bradleymanning.org, with almost daily up, updates and lots of information there, as well as uh, new action initiatives that you can support. Um, we've raised, I happen to be on the steering committee representing Veterans for Peace of the Bradley Manning Support Network. We've raised over $400,000 for his legal and political defense, and uh, almost all that money has come in small donations from people all over the world. There's a Facebook page, uh, Free Bradley, and uh, it's got uh, something like 30, 40,000 followers at, at this point in time. Just a lot of people uh, really understand the importance of supporting Bradley Mann, and clearly uh, uh, Ben Griffin and Kieran O'Reilly and, and uh, the newly formed uh, UK Veterans for Peace uh, understands that because you've been out on the streets already supporting Julian Assange and supporting Bradley Manning, 
and it's, it's much appreciated. I think that this uh, uh, formation of the UK Veterans for Peace is a, is a wonderful thing. It seems like it really speaks to the needs here and talking to the veterans here. It's like very much like talking to the young vets in the US uh, who've all experienced the same wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, and I think really that the Veterans for Peace in the United States <coughs> is going to be strengthened and inspired uh, by the work that you are, you are doing here. So we're very, very grateful and thankful and, and hopeful that we can uh, uh, force maybe the government to drop the charges against Bradley Manning and, and free him once and for all uh, to uh, uh, start building support in the United States for amnesty for all of the war resistors and uh, hopefully uh, not only to uh, end the wars and occupations of Iraq and Afghanistan but to cause a, a real uh, paradigm change in the consciousness of the people in both of our nations uh, so that we will go to war no more. Thank you.